The Cambrian period could be quite fittingly described as an iceberg of weirdness, even the proverbial tip of the iceberg. The relatively familiar animals from the time still resemble something haphazardly conjured up in the depths of a drunken fever dream. And just when you think you've seen it all, when you think that nothing could possibly surprise you anymore, something shows up that raises the abnormality threshold to entirely new heights. Canada's Burgess Shale is perhaps the most famous Cambrian fossil site in the world, and is also among the most valuable from a scientific standpoint, thanks to the astounding diversity of organisms preserved in remarkable detail all over the region. Any rock you stop to examine may bear upon its face an apparition of unparalleled intricacy, an artwork drawn long before pen and paper ever met, a window into the elder days of the Earth when life as we know it was beginning to truly set down its roots amidst the unrelenting hostility of our prehistoric planet. And even though over a century has passed since the discovery of the Burgess Shale, it has never ceased to be an epicenter for fascinating new finds. Say hello to Entothereos sinostris, one of an odd group of animals called the Lobopodians. Lobopodians are not a formal taxonomic group per se. Some are more closely related to modern arthropods than they are to other Lobopodians, and there doesn't even appear to be a prevailing consensus on what is and isn't part of the taxon. In the strictest sense, Lobopodians comprise an entirely extinct group of superficially worm-like animals, possessing soft, stubby legs called lobopods. Other, broader definitions have accommodated additional groups, like the so-called Guild Lobopodians, the present-day Onychophorans, and Radiodonts like Anomalocaris. The most inclusive of all definitions regards the Lobopodians as synonymous with the clade Panarthropoda, containing not just the various extinct cousins of arthropods, but modern euarthropods themselves. So, essentially, depending on how the boundaries delineating them are set, Lobopodians can be anything from an entirely extinct group to constituting over 80% of animal species alive, including my co-host. For the course of this video, I'll be going with the more conservative definition of Lobopodians. Otherwise, trust me when I say things just get way too confusing. But one thing is clear. Lobopodians, however the fuck you wanted to find them, were thriving in the Cambrian. Entothereos, a roughly 5 cm long Lobopodian, first ambled its way into academia in a study published in 2016, as nothing more than a nameless entity, the undetermined Lobopodian TBA. And now, several years after its less than memorable debut, Entothereos sinostris has finally been properly studied and described, based off over 200 fossilised specimens, some of which are marvellously well preserved. The anatomy of Entothereos indicates that it belongs to an order of Lobopodians known as the Lualishanians. Among the common traits for this group is the rather jarring difference in the forms and apparent functions of the limbs at the front and rear of the animal. The first few pairs of legs, starting from the front, five or six pairs depending on the species, were adorned with densely packed bristles, and were probably used to filter out tiny floating particles of food. The remaining pairs of limbs were instead tipped with a prominent claw, perhaps for the purpose of anchoring the animal to its chosen vantage point, while the front end sieved food from the surrounding water. Lualishaniids aren't the only Lobopodians suspected to have been filter feeders. A similar mode of life has been proposed for arguably the most well-known Lobopodian, Hallucigenia. Though Lualishaniids, with the pronounced differentiation of their limbs into two distinct sets with separate but complementary functions, seem to have been considerably more specialised for such a lifestyle. In the case of Entothereos, there's evidence that the claw-bearing legs towards the rear may have had a very strong grip indeed. Rather curiously, several fossils of the species consist of only the detached front half of the animal, and it's been suggested that the bisected state of certain specimens could be attributed to the animal's burial prior to their fossilization. 
In a rapid, violent burial event such as a mudslide, the firm anchorage of the Lobopodian's rear half to its substrate may have caused it to remain in place while the erect front half of the animal was torn off. It's a rather gruesome explanation, albeit a plausible one, and one that, if true, is a potential testament to the strength of the animal's grip. In addition to the typical Lulishaniad traits, Antothereos possessed a few more unique features as well. Along its back was a series of hardened sheets that were themselves enveloped in a layer of cuticle, which are what the genus name probably alludes to. Entothereos roughly translates to mean inside shield, a plausible reference to the animal's internalized plates. These hard sheets could have served as structural support for the Lobopodian's body, and may have also provided a robust foundation for its multitude of large, presumably defensive, spines. And nor were these dorsal sheets the only hardened body parts Entothereos possessed. Unusually for a Lobopodian, the five pairs of limbs at the rear of the animal, those adapted for gripping, were encased in armour plates. Armoured jointed limbs are among the principal defining characteristics of modern arthropods. Indeed, they are the very feature that the name arthropod refers to. The limbs of Antothereos, however, did not quite parallel those of true arthropods. While the appendages of arthropods proper are covered in armour plates that do not overlap and possess a flexible membrane situated at each point of articulation, known as the arthrodial membrane. The thickened hind limbs of Entothereos were instead encased in a series of overlapping plates of exoskeleton with no evidence of a soft membrane in between. Nevertheless, Entothereos sinostris still demonstrates a remarkable example of convergent evolution having evidently evolved arthropod-esque features independently of the arthropods themselves. And I suspect the species epithet Synostris, which means convergent, was bestowed upon the animal in reference to this fact, though I don't believe the publication describing the species explicitly states this. So there we have it, yet another addition to the Cambrian period's ever-growing roster of animals that look like they crawled straight out of Spore's Creature Creator. Regrettably, this video turned out rather short, but that's to be expected. When covering obscure and recently discovered species, there's only so much media and information that I can work with. If you'd like to learn about another Lobopodian, well, Guild Lobopodian, which may or may not be a Lobopodian depending on which definition you you know what, I cannot be bothered trying to explain this shit again. If you're interested in learning about another Lobo, maybe, maybe not Podian from the Cambrian, then check out this video about the enigmatic giant Omnidens Amplus. And if you want to stick around for more nerdy rambling about weird bugs, living or extinct, then you are warmly welcome to subscribe as well. Thank you all for watching, and I shall see you again very soon.